Good morning guys and welcome to Vlogmas. This is a video for lifting for beginners because I know that a few people have messaged um, and DM'd on my fitness Instagram regarding lifting weights, weight training, bodybuilding and I thought that I would just do this first video about form and the main lifts. All these exercises can be worked for strength, gaining muscle, i.e. tone, and for fat loss, it just depends on what rep range you use, how you program it, and whatnot. And I will do more videos on that stuff if you would like, but this is more about form, what not to do, and what to do regarding certain lifts. So, I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I tried to make it as succinct, succinct as possible, and yeah, let me know if you like it. Hello, good day, it's Vlogmas number. So I thought that I would do a video on going to the gym for beginners because I know that on Instagram people have asked me about how to start going to the gym and fearing lifting weights or doing exercises wrong and I ask my clients to send me videos of them doing their lifts and I try and put up some lifts on my Instagram but I thought I would make a video filming the do's and don'ts of all the main lifts. Now I would consider the main lifts to be squat, deadlift, shoulder press, chest press and barbell row. They're like the main lifts but also there's the hip thrust and then I'm gonna throw in some other things that I know people do like using the Smith machine and stuff like that. So that is what this video is today. Vlogmas we're going in. I also know that there's this like fear when you go into the gym of like all the machines and it's freaky and weird but don't be scared, people are too busy looking at their own muscles. Always, always warm up. Warm up the muscles that you're about to use, warm them up as I promise it will help with lifts and it will prevent you from being injured. Okay, warm up. When starting to lift weights, I always perform certain exercises the safest way possible. So with a shoulder press, I would choose to start with a seated shoulder press because you have more security for your back and form and it's just a safe place to start. With the seated shoulder press, I advise to have your back and bum as close to the back of the chair as possible and use weights that aren't too heavy to lift up in the first place so that you can perform all of the reps. Definitely don't not have your legs down on the ground for support. You want to use your feet to ground yourself. With a chest press, you have the choice of doing a dumbbell chest press as well as a barbell. I always advise to use a barbell when starting to do the bench press because it just gives you more security as you go down with the weights and as you lift the weights. You can start where you have your back pushed into the bench or you can create a bit of an arch like an Olympic lifter but this would take a little bit more explaining. When you start you want to have your wrists above your shoulders and bring the barbell down to your chest not to touch it. Always use a tempo I believe when starting of something like a two second by two second so you would count one two hold it for a split second and then one two up this just means that you are performing the exercises safe you also want sturdiness when you are bringing the weight down you don't want to bounce the bar back from your chest table row you want to make sure that your back is stable and your bum isn't sticking out too much if it is pull your pelvis down slightly like so you also always want to pull through your back so make sure that you adjust your shoulders to pull through 
through those shoulders and make this about your back pulling rather than using lots of arm. If you see in this pull, I am adjusting my shoulders before I pull the cable. Make sure that you have a good sturdy form with your feet on the ground before you pull. A squat is probably one of the most daunting exercises to perform, but once you get used to it, it's not as scary. Make sure you start with the bar in the correct position for your height. Make sure there's no weights on the bar before you maneuver it. Put yourself under the bar and decide if you're going to do a high squat or a low squat. Now, you want to make sure that you are taking a deep breath before you send yourself down into the descent. Make sure your head isn't poked upwards and use your knees and hips to break at the same time. You don't want to, as in this video now, push your head back, meaning that your back and neck aren't in line. You also don't want to push your bum back so much that it's going to put a lot of strain on your lower back. And you also don't want to break your knees first or your hips first. You need to have the break in your hips as well as your knees at the same time. You don't want your knees to be so far forward over your toes and your pelvis and hips to push forwards. Also, in this video, I'm showing you just from a better angle. Here I am trying to explain to you that I'm taking a deep breath in, breaking at the knees and hips, head in line, and breathing out as I come out of the descent. Make sure that you do take that deep breath because this is going to give you a real sturdiness in your core and you're going to be able to lift and be a little bit more sturdy in the lift. Here is me doing the awful position as well. Make sure that your head is forwards and as you break feel yourself trying to find the correct position with your pelvis not to tilt too far forward or too far back so that this whole spine here is nice and in line with your neck and your head area okay i'm gonna leave it there it seems daunting but start with a low weight if it does feel crazy scary the deadlift is probably one of my most favorite exercises get in position you want the bar in the middle of your feet and you want to have your back straight and not curved you also don't want your hips to be too low have your hips just above your knees and you want your shoulders in line with your wrists so your wrists are just underneath your shoulders you don't want your hips to be too low you want to feel the pull of the bar as you pull it up and you want to feel that in the back of your hamstring so really picture the lift being pulled up through the back of the hamstrings through your heels also you want the bar not to knock in the way of your knees so make sure that your hips and knees are in a position that allow the bar not to knock those knees also don't pull up your hips before you break your knees because that's going to put a lot of pressure on the lower back. You also don't want to break your knees before your hips. Try and do the pull all together at the same time. Keep the space between your ears and your shoulders, your back with tension and pull the bar all in one. Hips, knees at the same time and come down in exactly the same position putting the weight back where you picked it up from in the middle of your feet. A goblet squat is a really good squat if the bar does feel too daunting. Same notes are for this squat, break the hips and the knees at the same time, hold the weight just in front of the chest with your elbows at your waist and also make sure that you don't push your hips too far back or too far forwards in which you're backward then do this curve like so and you end up looking like the hunchback it's just gonna not be good on your spine position yourself correctly and push through those heels and feel the squat in your glutes i 
find the Smith squat is also a good squat to do if the free weight area and the squat rack seems a bit scary. But you want to make sure that you're in the right position and not stood too far forwards. You want your feet directly under the bar and you also want your hands and wrists not to be pulled. You want the wrist directly in line with your hands. And you also want your hips in position. You don't want to tilt the pelvis forward, but backwards. Do not put your head too far back. It's going to cause your back extension to be too much and put a lot of pressure on that spine. Keep your head in line with the spine like the other exercises I've said. And make sure that you have a tight core, pulling that belly button back into your back. It's really important with any exercise that your feet are in the right position and with the Smith machine and a squat in general, make sure that your stance is a natural stance. If your feet turn out a little bit, turn them out. And also if you're wearing trainers that aren't suitable because perhaps they have too high a heel on them, go and take your shoes off and do the exercise barefoot. Find your positioning, move around, see if you've got flat feet at all. If you do, you can dig those toes into the floor like this, create an arch for yourself, and then you can go into your squat. The reason why flat feet isn't great is because with having no arch means that when I do squat, it means that my knees buck and bend inwards together. And you want your knees to go directly forwards towards your toes. So I create this arch by pushing my toe into the ground to give my knees a better alignment. And then I also find my stance is better wider because that really helps with my knee positioning and where my butt would go. First rule of thumb with a hip thrust is to make sure you are comfortable because if you see here, this exercise can get really uncomfortable if you don't use a cushioning for your fanny pad or if you're a guy for your willy. So make sure you are able to either use a Olympic bar pad or get a mat from your gym like I'm about to do here. Also, make sure your weights are on the bar correctly. It's best to use the clips which you can see in this video which I don't use. That is naughty. So grab a mat, fold it, you can fold it in half, you can fold it in half again, anything that is really going to cushion your pelvis, your ovaries and your vagina. Then roll the bar back. You want to make sure that your bench is in position so that your elbows are able to just sit on the bench and your back is just in line with the edge of the bench. As you push your feet up and your knees and feet are at a right angle, you want to bring the bar to a horizontal so that your pelvis is flat, if you see here, so that you're using your glutes. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that the lifts made sense. I hope some of the notes worked in terms of, it's very hard sometimes when you're not with a client to exactly show certain things, but I just hope this was informative and useful so that next time you go down the gym and you are a bit worried about using the Olympic bar or the weight section because it's still intimidating because men are there doing their bicep curls and you wanna go there and you wanna do your hip thrusts. Stereotypes. But also, you might wanna go and do your bicep curls and I'd love it if I saw men in my gym doing hip thrusts, but other than Brett Contreras and the people he posts, I've never seen anyone in my gym doing hip thrusts. They should, because they would they would gain a lot from it. Good glutes, good power, strength. Glute strength. It's underrated. Anyway, I digress. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, like. I'm still feeling out exactly what it is I want to share and what it is you guys want to see from me. So... Let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys soon. Okay, bye.